India has changed over the last 10 years, especially with technology, okay, is, is mind-blowing, it's crazy. What's happened in the last 10 years is that almost every Indian now has a phone and most of them have smartphones. Um, all of them have capability to pay digitally, either through one of the digital wallets or... So this prompted us to think, okay, as to what is the future? And that's how we came up with the idea of online gaming, you know. Um, we launched Poker Saint, uh, which is an online poker uh, game. And uh, it's been about a year. What's tremendous about Poker Saint is the fact that we have one of the best teams that knows how to run online gaming. Uh, we have people uh, with us like Arvind, Balakrishna, Archit, Narayan, who's the CEO of the company, Shitej, DS, who's the technology brain. Um, what I love about the brand and the people, okay, the kind of difference that we've made to the gaming, especially online gaming in India is insane. I personally would have never believed a year ago if somebody would have told me we will achieve what we've achieved. And that's thanks to the fact that so many people love online gaming in yeah. India, you know, and people today don't mind swiping a card, you know, making an online payment. Really, it's changed and I love being in India right now. That's one of the best things that happened. So, where did you get this idea of starting the online gaming concept? Of course, India is a big, huge, vast market and you saw it as an opportunity. How did it all start? Yeah, superb. That's a great question. So, why, while I was doing a whole lot of other things, right? I was one of the key people uh, in India who built Just Style. I moved out in 2015 because I felt that, you know, Just Style had its time and the future is going to be somewhat different. So I was doing several ventures, right, after Just Dial. Um, I was one of the key investors in a company called Dunzo, uh, which is also invested by Google now. Uh, and uh, I had interests in logistics, in uh, customer engagement platforms. While I was doing all of that, I met this team, uh, Archit, Arvind and Chitaj, these three guys. I keep mentioning them because they're brilliant. Yeah. I met them and during a conversation, okay, uh, I found that all three of them were kind of wanting to do something, but they didn't know exactly what. Yeah. And we started, you know, with a, on, on the drawing board saying, what are people going to do? What are the millennials going to do? You look at the number of millennials in India, it was billion, out of the billion people that are there in India, at least about 20-25% yes. are the millennials. And all of them, like I said, had smartphones, had money and had an interest in gaming. So we said, why not? You know. And then we looked at gaming as an industry and said, where do we start? We want to do gaming and we want it to be on mobile. Yeah. But the question was, where do we start? So we said, let's start with poker. Yeah. Because um, we saw another poker, you know, online company getting listed on the stock exchange. Yes. And we said, there is acceptance. Okay. The law is changing in favor of having these kind of games in India. Okay. All skill based games. So we said, let's start with that. And then we will move on to non gambling games as well. So uh, at the moment, as a brand, we have Poker Saint, which does only poker. Yeah. We are on the verge of launching Rummy Saint, which will do, of course, Rummy. Yeah. We have Teen Pati coming up, uh, and we have the live casino coming up in India. Okay. So what will happen in the live casino is basically you will have, you know, on your phone, you'll be interacting with the dealer in a real casino, okay. real time. Um, so that's a game changer in my opinion. But the nature of these games is going to be different because uh, Thin Pati, yeah. Live Casino, they are not games of skill. Okay. Uh, they are a game of chance. So in India it's not legal. So therefore, we will not let people gamble there. It's going to be a subscription based model. So you know, you might pay two dollars and uh, you might get a uh, hundred thousand rupees worth of chips. You just play, you will never, you'll win, but you will never win money out of it. 
right? So it's like an entertainment, um, uh, you know, and a subscription-based model. So that's how the idea came about, and that's how we built what we've built so far. Uh, we believe we are India's uh, most ethical company in this space, yeah. and that's why we've grown so much. Because what we do is we give our players instant cash outs on all our games. Okay. We are the only players in India to do that. It was a innovation that we brought about when we launched this company. And um, while our closest competitor, which is listed on the stock exchange, would take three days to pay out, yeah. we paid out in 20 seconds and every time. Okay. You know, uh, did we lose money? Of course we lost money, right? But uh, all our players love us for that. And uh, that was an innovation that we are really, really proud of. So, so in the gaming space, do you plan to uh, be just in online or offline gaming as well? That's a great question. No, I don't think we will ever get into offline gaming. Right? We will stay uh, online because that's where the real growth is. Okay, that's where. But, that's where but when does India produce a brand like an EA Sport or something like that in gaming? Well, you there is a lot of. Yes, for so many international top brands in gaming space, which of course offline online both. Of course. So where does India produce that? Do you think uh, see anybody doing that? I think I think the time is right if somebody wants to do it. Yeah. Right. Uh, we are very clear with our vision. Yeah. Our vision is to go global. Yeah. And if we want to do that, and remember, we are just a one-year-old company. Yeah. We are bootstrapped. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we don't intend to. Um, diversify into anything that takes too much of capital okay uh -huh. we are cash positive okay at the moment and we are one of the most profitable companies in this space yes we see that you know our focus is very clear we want to be in the online gaming space and we want to grow horizontally uh, in terms of the markets so we are going after south america we're going after europe we're going after australia we're going after several other countries um, including Africa um, and as I told you we are also launching a several other games uh, like Rami, mm -hmm. like Teen Patti and so on and so forth. So we will focus on that but uh, the time is ripe. India is ready for everything that the world has to offer. Yeah. You know if somebody wants to go after you know offline gaming it's good. But you are clear you don't want to do it right now? Not at the moment. Okay. So the expansion of the online gaming space, you of course talked about the mm. Rami, Team mm. Pati and various things. Mm. Uh, how about international expansion? How do you get international players to come to your booth and join the party actually? Yeah, that's... Uh, that requires marketing, that requires innovation, that requires a lot more effort. Of course it does. Of course it requires a lot of effort. Uh, but the good part about online gamers is that they're always on the lookout for something which is more interesting yeah. than where they are already. Yeah. So uh, also the kind of technology that we use and the kind of marketing strategies that we have used, yeah. okay, we are sure that we will be able to get those players from, um, you know, markets. For example, um, we've launched from South America. Right, and we have we have also launched from Europe. So, just wanted to ask, how would a team party uh, interest somebody from South America or Australia? There are about thirty million Indians who live outside India. Okay. Okay, and uh, they all love team party. Yeah, everybody right. does. And that's the market that we're going after. Thirty million, right? The company strategy is very clear that you know wherever we launch outside of India. Uh, it's going to be money in and money out mm -hmm. and the same game in India is going to be a subscription model because okay. uh, you know that's we need to abide by the law in India um, so the question is how are we going to get people so a we're going to go after the non-resident Indian market which is 30 million for games like Teen Patti and Rami yeah. uh, for live casino right we are piggybacking on a lot of telcos uh, across the world um, so, telcos in most parts of the world, roughly at least about 85 to 90 countries that we have uh, potential partners in, um, actually promote games to their subscription base. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very easy route to go. Yeah. Uh, there is a revenue share with the telcos, so 
uh, they have skin in the game as well. Uh, that's the way to go for us. What do you think are your top most values that drive the brand? Because attributes can be copied by your competitors. Absolutely. All the values you talked about your yeah. three lead guys, uh, right. who you think are irreplaceable. Right. What are the values that you think are irreplaceable that is building your brand really? I would like to again talk about the instant cash out. Okay. See, across the world, gamers, especially yeah. in games where there is money in and money out, yeah. have a problem and the problem is to get the money out. One of the values that we follow is core values is that we will make sure the customer experience on all fronts is um, amazing, okay, to say the least. They feel safe at any given point of time. You know, I want to tell you examples of players who come to us who would just put in a little bit of money, play, and then just to experiment and know whether they will really get the money. So out I have a very interesting question yeah. to your sure. answer. Okay, sure. what if somebody makes a cash payout in 10 seconds of your 20 seconds? What's your strategy then? Well, I am sure they will and I would love the whole, uh, you know, gaming uh, industry to start yeah. doing this because that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Right. Uh, while I'm going on talking about the cash out, which is one right. of our strength and we were, we were the ones who innovated that in India. Yeah. Remember that we are also growing more than 100% month on month. Yeah. And that's not just because of cash outs, also because the game logic that we use. Okay. The quantum RNG is, mm -hmm. is, these are the technical terms that I'm using, but then quantum RNG is the random number generator. It's a, um, we are one of the few people, uh, companies in the whole world who use that kind of technology, yeah. right? So we are technologically way ahead Okay, of our competition okay. and we keep it with one intent our intent is player first yeah. it's not company first the next thing that we do is the rake that we generate on the business is the lowest percentage in the world so at the end of the day a player when he makes his money he gets the maximum money out of it okay. right uh, a combination of all of these things have made sure that we grow and we grow really fast okay of everything that i'm telling you uh, would sound hollow if we didn't have the last one year's legacy yeah we're growing more than 100 percent every month and that's not easy uh, you know in, in in a space which is overcrowded like ours yeah yeah you as a leader you've been investing yeah. uh, into various businesses mentoring people right what kind of a leadership model do you follow? Okay, uh, so first of all, uh, is it profit oriented or a developing a brand oriented? So if you look at all the businesses that I have mostly invested in, yeah. okay, they are the kind of businesses which are not trying to build valuation for the future, right? They are all profit oriented businesses. But I also have businesses like Dunzo, okay, in which I was one of the key first investors. Um, is both. It's profit oriented at the same time, uh, you know, it's built a huge amount of value. So you play a lot of safe bit to play with the business. Profit becomes the most important. So that also means that you will not unnecessarily invest for a branding sake. If profit is the prime concern of a, it's a business model like that. Yes, I actually believe that, um, you know, you can build a big business and a big brand. Yeah. without having to burn millions and millions of dollars Ooh, on, right, on, on, right. on branding. Yeah. So you must remember that I was part of building Just Dial right from its yeah. you know early days. And Just Dial okay, became a household name yes. uh, without really spending anything on marketing. Yeah. In fact, uh, at Just Dial, I don't think we ever spent a lot of money on marketing yeah. uh, until 10 years of its operation. Um, similarly, if you look at Poker Saint, right? Poker Saint, uh, I don't remember, you know, we've not raised any money at all. We're bootstrapped and yeah. uh, we've built this brand and it's it's one of the most popular brands in the gaming uh, industry in India. And so is Dunzo. Yeah. If you look at Dunzo, okay, uh, and if you talk to people in cities like Bangalore, uh, Pune, uh, Delhi, people swear by Dunzo today, yeah. right? And it's become like a verb, people say Dunzo it. 
the way Dunzo was built it did not mark it at all, right? Anything. It was just the fact that we made sure that our customers got, um, you know, a great service at the lowest possible price. Yeah. So, Abhimanyu, the basic thing that I'm trying to say is my experience of life has been that if you build any business and keep your customer's interest ahead of yours, yes. and you really make sure that, you know, you deliver what you promise, mm -hmm. I don't think your business won't grow. I think it will grow in any, in any case. It yeah. will, right? Yeah. And your other question is, how do I decide to invest? I follow a simple philosophy, you know. The philosophy is I don't I don't invest in ideas. I invest in people. Yeah. Right? For me, I meet people, I meet founders, and if I feel that this is the team, this is the guy that I want to back, I follow my gut. Right? Uh, the other thing that I've always followed is there are path-breaking, habit-changing ideas which people come up with. Yeah, but the implementation is not there. Not yeah. there. And, and personally, I believe that as an investor, I would rather invest in a mediocre idea with but a great solid team. guy behind it. Solid guy behind it. And it's okay. I'm okay to get 1% or 2% or 3% of the market share in an overcrowded market. But at least there is a market and there is a habit. Yeah. Because changing habit is very, very tough. Absolutely. Right? So that's been my investment philosophy and uh, strategy. Okay. And what kind of a leadership model do you follow? Uh, so very interesting question. I have a mixed leadership. Uh, yeah. I think so. Now that you're asking me this question, I'm just thinking. Uh, I think I have a mixed leadership style. Okay. I am hands-on when I am required to be on hands-on. Okay. Otherwise, I play a very strategic role. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am very involved to plan and look at the execution from a very, very high level. Yeah. So I love to have the bird's eye view, okay, and to make sure that everything is going smooth, yeah. right? Uh, but I do get hands on. Yeah. If I see that a business requires my involvement, even today, I would get it. When it comes to hiring people, right? Um, I still believe that I will get involved because yeah. I want the right team. Yes. Right. So I have a very unique and a very mixed leadership style. Right. Um, at the at the same time, I'm very very uh, cognizant of the fact that founders, uh, you know, a CXO a team of any business needs freedom. Yes. Okay, sometimes they need freedom to even make mistakes. Yes. Right? And I'm more than happy to let them make mistakes. Right? And that, I think, has been my biggest strength. Because I do not want um, them not to experiment. Because that's how we've built... So creative freedom, freedom is also extremely Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Okay. Lovely talking to you. Thank you. Break it here. Yeah. Thank and you so much. Meet you soon. Yeah. Yeah. Karansky.